Hey guys, hello. This is Abhijit. So today I'm just gonna open a laptop and put in a new 4GB RAM on this laptop. So this one already has a 4GB installed on this. So I believe. Uh, so what we're gonna do is open the back panel and just insert the RAM in the other DDR slot that we have. So this is a Dell laptop of my friend. So I'm just upgrading it so that. He can maybe play GTA 5 at the end of the day. So let's begin. And so to begin with, we need a RAM that you want to upgrade. So this basically I got from Amazon. One slot of RAM in that already. So I thought of upgrading it with the same frequency that is uh, 2400 hours. DDR4, 4 GB. So during the lockdown, I was pretty much away from my home. So I got this toolkit from the local hardware. This costed me about 110. As this is pretty much in a bad shape. However, I'm not complaining about my tools. As long as I've got the tools, I'm able to, you know, open up the laptop and get it fixed. So I got this tool about last week when I had to check as to what RAM is already there or to check the frequency of the RAM. And so now, I've got the new RAM, so I'm gonna install it on this crazy sticker bomb laptop. If you've got any comments, if you've got any questions, you can post it down in the description, sorry, in the comments. I'm sorry, this is my first video, so I might not be pretty good at it. So let's see how this goes ahead. So to begin with, you have to disconnect the battery. Make sure there's no power connection or any power cable attached to it. So just unlock the battery switch from here and lift the battery it's all out now the main thing is there are all screws on the back side or the flip side of the laptop so you have to make sure that you're connecting the screws at the same place from where you're taking out so maybe you can make a cardboard and keep placing all the screws one by one as you take it out so that it would be easier for you to fix the laptop in the same way that we have taken it out all right so i'm gonna use a star or the fill up or the plus screw driver which would be pretty small like if at all you are able to see this i don't know so the tip is pretty small so i'm gonna use that and maybe this tray to keep all the screws in that all right, so I'm gonna begin with the keyboard. I'm gonna remove the keyboard first. So to remove the keyboard, you have to make sure that right below the keyboard, the screws that you see on the flip side, you have to first. All right, so let's go ahead and start unscrewing the laptop. All right, so if you see, there are <coughs> some arrows and pinpoints or some letters, alphabets mentioned. So you need to figure it out and find out because all those screws are almost black in color or there are, they are so minute that you may not be able to figure out as to where the screw is actually so make sure that from where you're removing the screws you have to place it back over that so i've just removed the three screws over here from the keyboard back panel now just to lift the keyboard you may use a small minus step or maybe some flat sharp device just to insert your screwdriver over here and lift it. So you see, I am able to lift this. I am sliding it ahead and I am going to lift it a little bit. Make sure that you are not pulling it away because it's the cables are connected right here on the motherboard chipset. Lift this black slider and just slide it outside. And your you go. Your keyboard is out. Make sure you're keeping it in a safe place. So the last time I'd taken it out, so of course while fixing it back, I had fixed it properly. However, the way it's been factory fitted, maybe if you not place the cables properly on the chassis of the laptop, maybe this may be a little bent or you may feel it's a little you know puffed up 
than the normal flat surface that you may usually feel while typing. So I guess while removing the keyboard panel, you have to make sure that you're not bending it, you're not flexing it, you know, more. Because there are chances you may damage any of these circuit lines, you know, and these are like almost paper thin. Right? Just carrying in your binary data, I O. Right? And we're converting it. So now, next thing that you see is this small cable. Similarly, just lift it up, lift the black portion, pull it out, and <coughs> there you go. It's free now. So once you remove the two cables, you might see there are some screws over here on the main frame of the chassis. So go back to your Philip attachment. Some of you are removing the chassis screws. The second number screw. Um, okay, so. Okay, so after you've removed the screws, you can close this cover now. I'm going to remove the main <coughs> screws from the outside chassis, alright? So we're going to begin with you. So after you have removed all the screws, you see the CD or the DVD row, you can just slide it out easily. Make sure all the components that you are taking out from the laptop, you are keeping it safe. Make sure there are no screws attached. Remove all the screws properly. Ensure that there is no screw attached either on the flip side or on the front side due to the chassis. As I was telling you. We need to check if there are any screws attached so right under the dvd rom cd rom there are three more screws you see they are too small you can easily identify them and the only reason i am <coughs> emphasizing on removing screws properly is so that you won't damage your chassis while doing this Okay, <coughs> so as you can see, I'll <coughs> lift this up a little, and you can see there's a gap that is forming already. Make sure that you are taking out this port. So this will be for the hard disk. Sorry, the DVD ROM that was connected on your startup. Alright. <coughs> so here you go. <coughs> this is the heat sink, the CPU fan, the Wi-Fi chipset, your RAM, hard disk, slot for your CD from your DVD ROM. So you see there are two slots available for your RAM chipset. 
Okay. So this could be like this pull to open. So you scan for details on the QR code that they have. Make sure you're not touching the golden portion or the connection connector. So you see, there's a slot over here in between. So you have to make sure that you're fixing it in the similar pattern on the motherboard, or else you may damage this portion, and maybe your RAM <coughs> may not be able to have a proper connection with the motherboard. All right. So slide it in and. Slightly give it a push. So you see, <coughs> the clips will expand and hold it in its place. Okay, so that's it. All I had to do was fix this. So whatever I did to remove the laptop, I'm gonna do the same thing to fix it back. Okay, so this is gonna be maybe the part two. I just fixed the RAM. I'm gonna assemble back the laptop with all the components and the screws that I've taken out from it from this laptop all right so to fix back the dvd rom connector there's a slot over here you have to so make sure you're placing this cable properly it goes on the chassis board Make sure it's fed back properly. <coughs> Slide in your DVD room. Now to fix the keyboard. <laughs> Alright, so make sure all the screws are connected. Plug in your keyboard. 
that is back and properly. Make sure it is flat. <coughs> Plug in the battery. The battery has been fixed now. So just check if it's getting switched on. You can see the light up here. And there you go, it's on. <coughs> System memory has changed. So we can go continue. Uh -huh. yeah, I you have already taken it. Ah, you detected it. Ah, you have detected it. Ah, you have detected it. Ah, you have detected and thank you for staying and watching this with me. Take care.